Welcome to another installment of Mr. Agat Tutorials. Today we're going to be creating this vice assembly. We're going to start by building multiple parts. First we're going to start with the base down here. Then we're going to move on to some of the other more complica complicated parts here. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and open up a new file in Inventor. This will be in inches. So you can tell here all dimensions are in inches. The default is already in inches for Inventor. So I can just go ahead and go to my home tab here and open up a new part. So let me go ahead and pull up the dimensions here for this first part. So here are the dimensions. If you want to go ahead and take a picture of it, you're gonna need them for reference as we go along with this video. So first thing I need to do is look at this and analyze it and figure out how long this vice, this base of, for this vice is gonna be. So I know that this this portion right here is 5.25 inches. And this portion right here is 1.25 inches. But I don't know how long this is. Now, if we know a little bit of geometry, we know that from the center of a circle or to the edge of the circle or the arc, it's the same distance all the way through. So always going to be 1.5. So in order for this line, for this dot, to reach this edge, it needs to be 1.5. Is if it follows the circle radius, it's always going to be 1.5. So the same thing as this will be 1.5 lying down. So 1.5, 5.25, and 1.25, which means that total length here, I already went ahead and did it here. So 1.5 plus 5.25 plus 1.25 equals 8. So the total length of this base will be 8 inches. The height right here on this part will be 3 inches. You can tell that right there. And then on this side, it's 2.625. Is from the center of that arc to the bottom here. So again, take a picture of this. We're going to go ahead and move along. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch. I'm going to start on the XY plane. I'll make a line. And I will go ahead and start from the origin and go across 8 inches. We determined that was the total length of the base. And then I'm going to go up 3 inches. We'll go across 1.25 inches. It will be going down one inch. And then the way I determined that was the total height up here. The total height over here is three inches. And the total height over here is two inches. So the remaining bit of the vertical distance here will be one inch. So one inch. And then again, we want to go over. 5.25 5.25 enter now we'll be going up 2 inches on this side now we don't know how long this line is it doesn't give us a dimension for this line over here that's okay I don't need to know that I do need to know this 2.625 though so I would know there's a horizontal line right here but I don't know how long that is so I'm just going to leave it like that for now now I'm going to go ahead and draw a vertical line. That is 2.625 inches long. And now I'm going to go across because I know the center of my radius is on this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an arc. And I'm going to click the center point because I know the center point is right here. I can't do the other arcs. I don't know. I don't have enough information to do the other arcs. So I will do center point. First thing is asking me. You see down here in the bottom left is select center. So the center of my arc will be right there. Now my starting point is going to be right there, which is going to be 1.5 inches across. Now my ending point will be all over here. I could go past it, or I could just go ahead and just make sure it snaps right there to that endpoint. I can go past it just in this case to show you something. I could always come back and trim any extra I have. So again, I don't know how long that line is, but I don't need to know because I know all the other dimensions. I can figure that out. It just has to match right there. So I can get rid of this line now. I don't need it anymore. That was just there for reference. And in fact, I can actually dimension this now from this center down here, 2.625. I have all the dimensions I need. Actually, I can go ahead and dimension this 
circle right here as well. This radius should be 1.5. Now my object is fully constrained. You see there's no more blue lines. Everything's black. It's fully constrained. Finish the sketch. And now we need to extrude this. The extrusion of this will be 3.5 inches. Extrusion 3.5 inches. Now we've gotten the majority of this part finished. We just need to make these little holes here on the left hand side. I mean, the right hand side. It's a little circle here. And then we have to make these little um, parts where it attaches to the table. So, again, make sure you know these dimensions. Take a picture of them. Let's go ahead and get started with the new sketch on this side. And I'm going to start with the rectangle command. Now, make sure that when you're making this rectangle, make sure you don't get this green dot. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to make just a random rectangle here. Don't worry about the size right now. But again, make sure you avoid the green dots. Don't get the, get the yellow dots. Don't get the green dots. Just make a random rectangle. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and now and dimension it. So first I make the rectangles and now I'm going to dimension it. So the height of this first rectangle here is 1.25. And the height of the second rectangle, I don't actually know, but I can do some math. I can do the math using a calculator, or I can do it here with, inside of Inventor. 2.125 minus 1.25. The way I got that is the total height is 2.125. And I subtracted the height of the smaller, of the one on the bottom, and that's the difference. Now what I need to do, I need to make sure these are lined up properly. So I'm going to go over here to my vertical constraints. Vertical constraint. And I'm going to line up this middle with the middle here. Now these two rectangles are lined up middle to middle. And I'm going to go ahead and line up this one, same thing. So that one with the middle of my total, my entire object, which is that green dot. And you see kind of move everything symmetrical now. Now everything's in the middle. Now the length between this gap here is 1.5 and the space in between this gap right here is 1.25 everything is correct now I can go ahead and I can finish the sketch and I'm going to go to extrude click on the bottom one click on the top one And then it's going to be an extrude cut. And it's going to go all the way through. Through all. Just like that. Press OK. You see, so now that goes all the way through. And we can just go ahead and compare it with our shape here. You can see it cuts just spread a little bit just like we did here. So we know we did it correctly. And here are all the dimensions that I was using again. Now we're going to go ahead and make this little arc up here. So the center, once again, center lined up. The radius of it is 0.75. And then the diameter of the hole is 0.65. Make sure you know the difference between radius and diameter. Radius is from the center to the edge. Diameter is from the edge to the edge. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm start a new sketch on this side. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the big circle first. So again, the green means it's in the middle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make it. 0.75, which is a radius, but no, times it times two. So again, I can do the math in my head, or I can have inventor do the math for me. 0.75 times two, which is 1.5. Now let's go ahead and the little circle, which that one is diameter, which is exactly what I need for inventor. So I'm just going to and type that in, 0.625. This one, I don't, do not have to multiply times two, because it's already diameter. Finish sketch. Extrude. Extrude that. And this one's going to go two, not through all, it's going to go two, to this point here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and press OK on this one. Now you notice it's not 100% complete because we're missing that other side of the hole. So I'm going to go back to this, to this extrusion three, hit a little plus symbol. I'm going to turn on the visibility for that sketch which will then allow me to extrude the remaining part of this hole here. Extrude. Okay, it's going to be an extrude cut to 
this part right here. I press OK. And there we go. Now I can go ahead and hide the visibility of this one. There we go. And there's that hole. And you can see it goes all the way through to the other side right there. Not all the way through the whole object, just through that first part. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the, the bottom parts that actually attach to the table. We're going to start a sketch on the bottom face. Start a 2D sketch down here at the bottom. Same thing for these dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and um, from here, from the top down, it's 0.5. And then I'm going to go down an additional 2 inches. And then it goes up like this. And kind of meet to the middle here. So very similar to the rectangles. I'm not worried about dimensions right now. I'm going to come back later in dimensional afterwards. So I just know it kind of looks like that. That's all I know for now. Now I can come back and dimension this properly. So the circle needs to be radius 0.625. So again, 0.625 times 2. Now what I need to do is also get this dimension from this edge to the center of the circle is 0.625. You notice it looks kind of funky, but that's because I haven't finished dimensioning or constraining everything. I now need to go ahead and constraint this line to this circle here. So tangent constraint click on that line, click on that circle, click on that line, click on that circle. You notice it's a little bit offset. You're like, well, that doesn't look accurate. Well, well, we can do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a vertical constraint. And the reason I'm doing vertical and not horizontal is because you see if I look at it right here, it's my bottom view over here top right of my cube is facing incorrectly. So if I face it to where it says actually I can read the word bottom, you notice it's vertical. So the center of that two inch line, I want that to be lined up with the center of the circle. You see everything kind of lines up properly now. Now I can just trim any excess here. And look at that. Now there's, there's a hole inside. That hole is 0.375. Enter. And then I'm finished sketch. And then how far up do I need to extrude this part? So if you look over here, it doesn't tell me, doesn't give me the dimension over here, but over here on the left hand side tells me it needs to go up 0.375. So I will need to extrude this, this portion, and this portion. I need to go up. So this direction. I need to go up 0.375. Enter. Was one. Now you've noticed that from the edge of this to the beginning is 0.5. Same thing with the back part. And then it doesn't tell us on here, but I'm going to go ahead and assume there's going to be these same two applied to the other side. The same distance. They're looking at the same distance. So what I'm going to do is I notice it's symmetrical, so I'm going to go ahead and create a mid plane between two planes. Click on this side, click on the other side, and it makes a plane right in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the front and the back. So plane, mid plane between two planes, click on this front, click on the back, and it makes a plane across the middle here as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to the mirror command, which is up here. Mirror. Select this feature, mirror plane. Click on this guy. Press OK. So look at that. Now I have two. Now to get these two on the other side, do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Mirror. Now I'm going to select this feature and this feature, both features. Mirror Plane will be this long one. You can see there's a preview there of those two. Press OK. What I need to do now is hide the visibility of these two work planes. I don't need these anymore. I don't want to delete them. I just want to hide the visibility of them. And then that is... The conclusion of the first part right there.
you can also change the materials. So over here right now is default. You can change it to um, steel. You can change it to whatever you like. Let's see, engine turns. There you go. See, there's an example. Pick whichever one you like. Actually, I think on here on the example, I think it tells us what material to use. Let's see, gray cast iron. So there you go. That's the one you got to use. Yeah, make sure you guys do that. If you have any questions, type them down in the comment section down below, and I'll answer those as soon as I can. Thank you.